FNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Good morning, everyone. Basil Chapman here on Wednesday, the 5th of October, early edition. This is 8.06. It'll be replayed again at 10.06, my usual time. We're looking at the Dow down 270 at 30,095 in the, the Dow futures. Uh, the Dow futures were at, on Monday morning, 28,635. Unlike the cash index, the Friday close in the cash index was lower than on Monday. But Monday made a new low in all the futures. And as a result, we saw this two huge candles going from Monday's low of 28,635 to a high of 30,399 yesterday. That, that, is, that really is one of the biggest two-day uh, rallies we've had, certainly off a low. It's uh, spectacular. Therefore, you've got to anticipate some kind of a pullback. However, we had a reading yesterday for subscribers to my opening call. I'd mentioned that the the churn gauge, uh, this is Richard Arms' uh, short-term trading index. I've used it for decades now, just as numbers, just a certain over a certain number. I've noticed that if intraday it goes over a certain number, there's a really good chance that there is an oversold reading in the market, oversold, overbought reading in the trend, and that within two days, the S&P future should have a really good rally, could even be off a low, but you've got to be prepared for a very good rally. And if the uh, trend is below a certain level, then you will see the Dow, the very next session by early morning, usually it's the morning lately, over the last year, you've seen some moves in the Dow in the futures market overnight that is so strong that there is a powerful um, rally and a pullback intraday, and it doesn't, it just misses going negative. If it misses going negative, even if it was up 300 points, but goes to the, the worst session part of the day, is that it's still up eight points and then it rallies again into the close. That's a failure because it has to go negative. So in this particular instance, we are negative. We're down 277. So it's kind of completed that. But this candle that was made, if I go to the Dow Cash, and that's a little bit uh, more of a clue, that's called the Mirabosa candle with no wicks or virtually no wicks. And that usually says to me, either you get a small doji candle and then a pullback the next day, or you just immediately pull back into the candle and how you come out of it in that particular session is going to be very important. In other words, if you take out yesterday's high in this session, that would be very positive. Um, the, the only other conclusion is that within this particular pattern, if there is a monster gap up again, in other words, a second day of gap or second bar of gap, we've seen that uh, of takeoffs, you remember the takeoff that was made back in June, around about the twenty, around about the seventeenth of June, when the low was twenty nine thousand six fifty three. Uh, there was a low, a Doji candle low, and then you had two, three green bars. Even though there was a, a peak A, gray peak A, then a huge move up, and then what happened is there was a powerful rally into the thirty one thousand eight eight five level, and the candle reversed, and you did not break above that for about two and a half weeks. So a lot of things can happen. If I, I, I don't want to go back right now. Just take my word for it. There are moments, there have been over the last few years, where you get a Moroboza candle after the reversal candle off a low, and then another one the very next session. That's usually tremendously powerful. All right, let me show you a couple of things here. So I'll go through all the numbers. There's no need to rush because this is the market hasn't opened. We're still pre-market. This is still early a.m. We've still probably got some news at uh, 8.30 this morning. We've, we've even got Fed today. At least I think there should be some kind of Fed uh, mo uh, momentum one way or the other. But have a look at these. Look at this pattern. You go from this big arch right here, arch pattern, to a cup formation that fails, 
continues another arch, the dreaded H pattern, going to a lower low to the low of the 17th, and then a successful arch formation that continues higher, walks the nine period moving average, green line, flips over at that peak F candle in the 34,000 area, and then turns pink. The nine goes under the 14 period moving average. Look how much work would have to be done for this pink nine period exponential moving average to turn green by crossing over the black line, the 14 period moving average. There's no question you'd have to start testing the Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone. Now have a look at this. I am going to do it just with a single line. Make it a little higher. You see that line? I would love to do this. for, for Ever since I was hand charting back with pencil and paper, um, I've loved the synchronicity of bar movement. Now look at this. Yes, look at the pattern. Let's change the color. Let's make this red because this is going down. Let's make it red. You've got until the 11th of October to create the number of bars making this uh, sickle type pattern. This is kind of a reversal pattern. Going to wards the Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone. So there is a lot of work to be done to be able to get to that. You've got the, the MACD, which just finally crossed over yesterday. The stochastic, which is really weak at 30%. The unbalanced volume did do a little V-shaped pattern at the bottom, but it has to see follow through today. Otherwise, it's going to be a, a sign that has, that was not just a one-off spike off an incredibly um, oversold condition, but there's going to be a lot of work to be done to be able to break into this inside track repellent zone. And I'll give you the numbers now. Of course, it's a declining zone, so every day it'll be lower. Today's action says 30,831 to 31,020 uh, is the resistance area. I don't see anything like that today. However, let's look at the same thing in the E-mini. I'm using the continuous contract. Beautiful, beautiful support level. Look at this. There was some synchronicity to the bottom, but look what's happened. Look at those candles that went right into the Chapman Wave inside track propellant zone. One, two, three, four, five, six. And have a look at this. This is the inverse. So I'll do the, the DOG first. DOG, which is one to one short. The Dow. Uh, we've been long uh, this uh, since way back over there in the 30 uh, right there. In that area right there, uh, we've taken a little money off, and it did make that peak D and pull back very sharply. But in the big context, this particular pattern says you, you've broken to the upside and closed above the left side high of 37.52 for so many sessions that that's almost like a magnet that there should be some attempt to try to get back there at some point over the next number of weeks. It doesn't matter if it doesn't. But at this particular point, we are keeping the core position of the one-to-one -one short. But have a look at this. This is the inverse of the uh, S&P. This is the SH. It's the same thing. Look at that. That also just closed uh, once above the left side high of uh, the 17th of June at 17.20. We went to the 17.29 area yesterday. We're trading at uh, 16.46 right now. So I want to go through a number of things and we'll come back and we'll go through the different indices. Of course, this is uh, recorded early. I'll be back. In a time of booming inflation where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16-year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, diverse party, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ.
Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Good morning, everyone. Basil Chapman, early edition. We uh, replayed again at my usual time. This is 8.18 in the morning. Uh, and we're uh, looking at, I'm showing the SH, which is one-to-one -one short the S&P, made a peak F top. The DOG, one-to-one -one short the Dow, made a peak D top. And we're looking here at the continuous contract of the E-mini. And you can see that there's a lot of work to be done. Yes, the MACD just crossed positive. The stochastic uh, is now at 27%. That's just okay, coming off a low in the uh, in the teens of single digits. And the on-balance volume has turned up. The weekly chart still looks very, very weak. That's why it's called the weekly chart. Nah, just joking. And now let's go to the QQQ. Uh, QQQ had a very strong, powerful move. It's down at, at 279.62, down 251. And that was a low that was made, I believe. I forgot to uh, update that. The low was 267.10. Let me just change that to at a trough D, 267.10, 67.10. lovely if these are automated. So this is a gray leg. Eh? Remember, gray starts off in the Chapman Wave methodology until we get to a, a, buy, a buy signal that's upgraded to a buy mode. Then it says blue and it says what? You're in a buy mode, you should go to at least a D. We haven't got a buy signal yet. Look, there's a W formation in the on-balance volume. Stochastic's pathetic at 13%. The, the MACD has yet to cross positive, but it was a fabulous, fabulous rally off the low. Uh, so two very good candles. But if you look at the weekly chart, it says it's just the start of something. So now let's go through the um, IWM, the IWM, which was doing better yesterday. That's the Russell 2000. So the IWM has gone to a very strong leg B. All the others are only an A. The IWM has already started to move. And this says to me, we cannot rule out that the small caps in this particular time frame might start to find buyers. They haven't yet. But what's happened in the monthly chart, we made a peak B. And in the arch formation that I call the dreaded H, we have not taken out that low. Uh, that was made at 162.42 back in June. So that's really very important. 
and it's saying there is some strength, pockets of strength, and that's all I can say. Now, what's really important is that I'll just do gold right now. Gold is pulling back some. It's down 11 at 17.19. Fabulous single leg A. I should change that still to gray. It hasn't been changed to blue, so it means that this is just the start of an up move. We've got the MACD very strong. Stochastics running nicely at 70%. It needs to get over 80% for me to get a buy signal in the stochastic. That's not on the on the instrument we're watching. That's just on the stochastic confirmed with the MACD. And then we need to see the price start to move higher. Um, and then I can get a buy mode. Probably I have to wait for a leg B before I can say that the gold is actually in a buy mode. The silver... Lead, and my fear always is that silver acts poorly, gold acts well, then silver catches up, then silver leads. And then as silver is leading, they both pull back. So I'm watching this very closely. We have to put this together. Down, silver's down, uh, continuous contract at down 74 cents at 20.35 at a spectacular move. Just missed the 200 period moving average, but I do have to call it a peak D. And it's pulling back. We had a silver stock. We have a silver stock, which had a spectacular move. And we, we took really good profits with 20% and 12% off. But we still have the core position. But it pulled back very sharply yesterday. And my concern is that gold is going to start to lead again rather than silver. But we'll be watching this closely. Let's go to the dollar, DXY. Big move up today, up 95 cents at 111.02. I say big move up because the candle of yesterday suggested that if we took out yesterday's low, we could go straight down to the 50 period exponential moving average. This is a peak D in the Chapman Wave methodology. I have to wait for the day before I can put uh, a down arrow in, but it's very close to a sell C. Well, I should actually know. I should, I'll do that at the end of the day, but I have to follow it. But I'll probably put it down there to say that dollar daily has got a sell signal. Weekly has got a peak F, but it's still very strong. And leg C in the monthly chart said there should still be in the Chapman Wave methodology in 2022. There should still be a leg D. That would be probably when we get the next bout of selling in the general market where the dollar starts to climb again. When that is, we don't know. And now we're looking at the EURUSD. That's the euro dollar currency pair down sharply at 0.9914, just under par. Uh, it almost did it hit par yesterday. No, 0.9994. So it just missed it. And you can see the weekly chart says, ah, we've seen this picture before, but we haven't seen it where the MACD actually doesn't deflect lower, but actually crosses positive. Stochastic's very weak, but that uh, MACD, the moving average convergence divergence, if it actually does po turn positive, you could see a challenge of the 14 period exponential moving average in the weekly to take it to 1.006. A uh, couple of things that we want to do right now is, I didn't do this, I wanted to wait just a little bit, I wanted to see if there's some... Uh, a rally attempt off the, the the lows that were made earlier this morning. So far, not really. It's, uh, prices are down at the lows. So the VIX index is up 0.39, only th up 0.39 at 29.46. That is a big move off the peak D at 34. Remember, Chapman Wave peak D is where other things can happen. Uh, it can go higher, but that's where you've got to raise your foot off the accelerator momentarily and hover over the brake. Yellow light flashes, 34.88 at a peak D. It pulls back from the 34.88 level to yesterday's low of 28.56. 20, it's up almost a dollar at 29.48. I'm watching this very closely. Why? Because for weeks now, we've been talking about the Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone in the weekly chart. 38.94 back in January. Uh, a point a lower at 37.79 in February, a point lower at 36.64 in May, a point a little more than a point lower in June, and pulls all the way back underneath the Chapman Wave inside track propellants and then quickly pops back in. And what does it do? It's, it pushes up to 34.88, a little less than a point away from the June high, and now it's pulling back. So this inside track repellent zone Remember, I like to draw this little mini channel there. We went to the mini channel at the bottom. Let me just draw this in here to say, if at any point the VIX, the volatility index, on a weekly basis tests this inside track starting at 25.28 to 24.14, 
and it's rising. So that price will change a little bit. At any stage in October, that'll be spectacular for the market because then the, then the Dow should be at least 1,500 points higher and the S&P certainly nearly 200 points higher. So we'll see what happens there. That's just anticipating what happens from these lines. But being repelled, the week has hardly begun. I mean, this is like not even midweek yet. So we, we've got to wait for Friday's close to see where the volatility index closes. Normally, when it spikes above and touches the green line, that's the outer uh, inside track repellent zone, uh, if it c closes sharply below, it invariably goes really sh powerfully down from the pink line and closes the week. But this is, look at this big red candle. We've been above, been below. We're going to be watching this very closely. I'll be back in a moment. This is the early edition of the, the opening call. My, the opening call is my daily newsletter. But this is the early edition of the Tiger Technicians Hour. I'll be back in a moment, and uh, that will be 8.30 news that's coming across the wire. So we'll be back. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks, we're back. So we talked about the VIX, the volatility index at 29.46, up 39 cents. We'll see what happens. But normally in a powerful move off a low like this, and I I was sure that I read somewhere over the last week or so that there was a 100 to 1 down session. Um, and if I remember correctly, the late Marty, uh, Marty Zweig used to have a reading that there was 100 to 1 that was an extremely positive uh, move and that could actually turn – into a very good, at least short-term buy signal. I don't remember that, but S&P in the den has just typed in yesterday, the NASDAQ 100 had a 100% bid, seen only six times since 1996, six out of six times. 
That uh, I mean, that is quite something. So you can understand. So there was an exhaustion sell-off, and now there's an exhaustion uh, um, running buying spree. So some kind of some kind of digestive phase today would just be a very normal thing. But this is a very for me. This is very important. Talking pattern wise, remember I said that a really powerful pattern is if you get these two gaps, sometimes you even get three gaps with a, like a Moroboso candle with no wicks, big, big green candle, or on the way down, it's a red candle. That's kind of what you want to see if you're thinking this is the major, a really serious 2022, the bottom. I don't think it is. I think it's a bottom again. There are a series of these, and that's why I've been saying I don't think we're looking at a crash scenario. What I'm thinking is, we keep making lower lows and lower highs. And as we get over more and more oversold, so that the rebounds need to start to include stocks like a Shopify, which got hammered 90% down or something from 176 down to 26 the other day. Had a spectacular session yesterday, pulling back a little bit today. But that you can't have a single green candle like this. You have to have these stocks that were just, let me just even look at DocuSign, which what did that do? Yeah, DocuSign's struggling, struggling. So there are just a couple of stocks that have been decimated to the downside that need to show signs, at least for me. And perhaps Shopify is maybe in one of the areas. Uh, we don't have it. But um, this is one of the areas that says if, in fact, the ones that were fantastic going to the highs in 2021 – and with the worst coming back, look at this Eiffel Tower. Look, it's like an inverted, it's, it's this cup, it's an arch formation. Looks like an Eiffel Tower, double Eiffel Tower, straight up and straight down. Um, if they can start to show some kind of sign of strength, that's going to be very important. Within the context of the XLF, and I spoke about this yesterday, that was a fabulous move in the end. It didn't look like it intraday because it was, a, yes, it was an iron reversal potential, but I love that. But it's a fabulous move. That doesn't mean to say that that is the move in the XLF and that now is clear sailing because the financial S&P Select Financial Spider Fund is going to scream to the 34.64 level, 34 level of the 200 period moving average. But it is a fabulous takeoff. It had this cluster formation. And just like the IWM, this is in leg B. It means a little bit more mature. And it's, I'm still calling it gray. I won't change the color just yet. But the MACD hasn't crossed positive yet. It's very close. So there are a lot of signs that say for, a, for an intermediate term, more than just a short-term bounce, but probably a rally, we are, we are seeing all the signs that are there. And what does it say? It says because the XLF did not take out its left side low of June, which was at 20, I think it hit 29 something. Uh, here we go. This left side low of June right there, uh, island reversal, doji candle, uh, 30, oh, 30.17 was July. In July, this uh, it was in early uh, mid July. And this last move down was at uh, 30.12. Oh, I now need to check it out, huh? 30.12. 30, 30 Wait a minute. Let me just pull this across. Oh, of course, we're going back even further. Yes. Okay. So in this particular instance, we did go underneath in the arch formation, left side, right side. This is a bar symmetry, but it didn't use the uh, plumb line. It used a different plumb line to get there. Uh, it used a, a doji candle right there. We went under it, closed above it. So that says, because you did go under it, that your resistance is below the major high that was made at peak D on the 16th of August of 35.97. Uh, but it, it, it can go to either a candle or a gap or a, 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 some kind of a moving average resistance. And it says the 50 period moving average is at 32.79. And then you've got this left side high of 34.08 on the 19th. So yes, it could go there and how it handles that particular resistance is good, but it probably will not go above that peak D that was made back in August. So this is a good sign, at least that the financials are attempting to find some kind of a low here. SMHs, that's the next one. SMHs are down 
dollar ninety six right now pre market at one ninety eight. They went off the low of one eighty five point eleven made on Monday. Uh, that was really a fabulous move to the upside. It's done this before and then failed. So we're going to be watching this very closely because 200.61 was the high yesterday. If it's able to break above that by Thursday or Friday, that'll be a good sign. That'll help the weekly chart because that MACD is much higher now than it was back at the low in July. And the stochastics Mm, a little bit better than it was, and the unbalanced volume also is just fractionally higher. But to get the pink nine period moving average in the daily to cross positive and turn green, you'd have to go to the 50 period moving average of 211. So there's a lot of work to be done. But I like the way that the MACD has flattened out and now is trying to turn positive. It just crossed positive yesterday. And that says to me, as a short term bounce, it's really important that the semiconductors, I, I'm not sure they can lead the way, but they at least are moving higher with the market if the market continues and then perhaps lead the way. Because if it can take out the high of the 21st of September, this is the SMH market vectors semiconductor ETF, 209.37 was the high in September on September the 21st. If it can close above that in the next week, That'll be a really good sign as a, hey, the low that was made in October in the futures and the low that was made um, in the in semiconductor index uh, in September on the 30th on Friday um, could see an October, look at this, an October rally that makes the September low a low of at least import importance right now. And that's going to be important. So what we're looking at is I want the semis to rally. I want the banks to rally. I want the VIX index to be pulling back. The TLT is down 73 cents at 102.81. That's still uh, an irritation to me. The, the If you look at this monthly chart, we've gone to the inside track propellant zone. I want to see TNX.X. I want to see the yields in the 10-year, the 10-year yield, pull back sharply. It has got a peak F. I should put that. It's, it could be an alternate count. I'm calling it an F for now. An alternate count G in the, uh, actually, that's all I can call it right now in the uh, weekly chart, and a D in the monthly. And it says there's a, there are a lot of, the nine period moving average is still way above the 14. That says that there's still internal strength in bonds. Uh, in, in, sorry, in the ten-year yield. In other words, the um, let me just do this quickly. The TLT, that's the thirty-year, that's the twenty-year iShares Treasury Bond ETF, needs to travel into the Fibonacci at some point in the first two weeks of October. I want to see a hundred to one hundred nine hit so that yields can be pulling back. That's a big ask. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at tfnn.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. 
Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi folks, so we're looking at this is now at 8.42 in the morning. Uh, this show is being recorded, Tiger Technicians Hour. Look how the 200 period exponential moving average has been the repellent zone in the one minute chart. It just hasn't been able to close above it. If at any point it can uh, push above 3777 and hold there and start to trade above that for 10 or more minutes, that'll say great. Now it's got a little bit of impetus to get back upside but most importantly off this spectacular move yesterday you just got to expect some kind of a digestive phase maybe it lost uh, part of the morning maybe it goes all the way through into tomorrow morning we'll see what happens here so nvidia i was asked about nvidia you see this uh chapman wave inside track propellant zone the declining trend line little mini channel and it bounced off it. That's a good sign. It's pulled back today. So far, it's down to $1.67 at $1.30. It did go to the $1.31. It went to $1.32.20 yesterday. Most importantly, it needs to close, first of all, above the high of the 21st of uh, September at 140.31. And then, very quickly, it can't take time. If it does it once, that is to very quickly go to the 12th of September high of 145.47. So we're talking about 13 points from here. That's a really big ask in a, in a stock that has had a little bit of a pullback from in the 340s down to the 119, 120 area. So, and you can see the weekly chart, yes, it's attempting to turn around, but there's a lot of work to be done. So that's uh, NVIDIA as part of the semiconductor area. A couple of things that I want to look at here to see what's happened. Has gold done anything? Yep, it's still down nearly 12. Silver is down 3.76%, uh, down 0.79. Had a spectacular move from uh, the low in the low 18 area. Spikes all the way up to uh, 21, and now it's it's down at the 20.29 area. Uh, I'm watching this very closely. You now, high-grade copper question came in. Yep, high-grade copper is in the lower area. It did have a fabulous rally off the low, but it's still in this area that says to me, if you put it together with wood, the iShares Global Timber and Forestry ETF, just coming off a low like this, that, that also says to me uh, that the internationally there's a lot of weakness all around the world based on the iShares Global Timber and Forestry uh, ETF. Wood is the symbol. And if you put it together with high-grade copper, which is also international, oops, typed it in the wrong place, uh, which is also an international, at least uh, suggestion of international ac uh, economic activity. And we're looking at that. Uh, coming off a low at 3.24-ish area, up at 346, 
But uh, if you look at the weekly chart, it's just the arch formation. So, yeah, this is what I'm really looking at here. And a couple of questions. Uh, how about Amazon? Yep, Amazon I spoke about yesterday. Uh, it has a, had a very nice uh, bounce to the upside. It's down $1.79 at 119.30 pre-market. Amazon, I think, is stuck in a range. And so far, the whole whole 105 to 100 area has been tremendous support if it takes out 100 in october that's really negative but i think it had bounce it could bounce uh, to the 122 130 area in the long term the question came up is this now the time you said nibble when it was in about 135 just just only put your foot in the water to get a feel just like a couple of shares or something so that you can get a sense of what it does that's not your real entry mm, i think the real entry so at 119, what I would say is, if you have nibbled at that 135 area, you could do a little nibbling right here at 119, but this one has to have a stop of about four points. So 114 would be the stop, and you would nibble it here. If it starts to move by Friday into Monday of next week, it is at 121 right now. If it is very, sorry, 119 right now. If it is very close to 123 to 125, That'll create a cup formation, and that'll say, you know what, it can go all the way to 135, the 200-period exponential moving average. But I don't think this is the not the big buy on Amazon yet. Um, but as a trade, yeah, I could say uh, you could have a little nibble there. A uh, question came in. Uh, I had it yesterday. If I could look. Oh, IYT. Oh, no, it was Jets. I'd mentioned Jets, which was the... U.S. Global Jets ETF had a spectacular session going from the low of uh, Monday around about 14.70s uh, to a high yesterday of 16. I don't think it hit 16.32, but uh, well, that, I mean that's a spectacular percentage move in in one day. 16.30, uh, 16.12. Uh, no, no, no. Did you read that correctly? 32. 16.32, uh, pulling back a little bit at 16.09. This is important. If we can see the U.S. Global Jets ETF, that's the ETF with all the, jet, the, uh, the, the airline companies, if it can go, go towards the Chapman Wave Inside Track repellent zone in the 16.90 area, and it can do it by this, maybe not by Friday, but, but early this coming week, by Monday of next week, I would say that that's a very good sign. If it fails and it takes out 15.75 any time between now and Tuesday, huh, a week from today, uh, a week from yesterday, that'll be very negative. So there, there's something I wanted to do. Uh, I wrote it down, I wrote it down, I'll get it. Oh, X, XLP. Remember I spoke about the defensive area. Defensive area came into the Chapman Wave inside track support level, and it had a good rally yesterday. But it's saying to me that just in this interim period, if the select consumer spider staples S&P fund, it starts to lag. In other words, had a very good move. But if it starts to lag here and you start to see something like the SLX, whoa, look at that. This is the steel sector. This is the Van Eck Vector Steel ETF, which is trading um, at 52.85 at the close yesterday. It had a low of 40, unbelievable, 46.55. And that was on the 26th last week. And here it is six sessions, and it powers up. I love this. This is a really nice-looking chart right now. That's a good sign. The weekly chart says, ah, yeah, we've seen this before. But actually what's different is that the MACD cross positive is stochastic rally to 33%. That's not, I would have preferred 38%. 33 is okay. But look at the on-balance volume. And it's saying that if you exclude, well, I, I like to do it from the top. I can't, so I'm going to have to do it from this one. If you look at this, Shorter term trading, uh, I, I'm going to take it from there. That's all there is to it. It says that if the if the trend line resistance at 54 is taken out, then 55, 34, the 200 period moving average in the daily chart could be hit. This is a very good sign. And this is the reason why we, we went long first thing Monday morning in the Dow. Uh, and we're trying to add, we've just added to that position. But I'm still very, very selective on the upside. Uh, there's one particular position. I don't know if we've gotten. I, I, I can't do it because I'm in the middle of the show. Uh, but let's see. That would be Wednesday. Uh, I don't know if we got this particular position. I think we might have. And that would be an aggressive long in an aggressively 
a weak area that should turn around and have a, an uns, an, a pretty sharp. You know, I think of this as gush. You know, you know what is that oil? What was years ago with Paul Newman? What was that movie with the oil and the oil just spouts up and you can't stop at the gush? Well, I'm thinking that if there is a gush and by the end of the day, the Dow and the S&P and the Qs and the IWM actually have a pretty decent rally off the lows that are made early this morning, we could be seeing this gush to the upside. And at this particular point, that would be really important because yesterday was a spectacular move. We've, we've, we've used up a lot of that upside energy. I'll be back. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. I'm going to see this last section, uh, a segment uh, before we get to 9 o'clock. And this will be, of course, replayed at 10 o'clock. So, of course, that'll be uh, going to 11 o'clock. At 9 o'clock, we have Tommy O'Brien. At 9.06, we have to uh, Tommy O'Brien for the Market Kickoff Show. And I believe also today, oh, that should be very interesting. Also has a great interview coming up. Uh, so we're also looking at uh, 11. If it's 11 o'clock that you're listening to this, then you get Steve Rhodes' great programming here for the rest of the day. What am I looking for? I'm looking for the VIX index to buy the by about 130 this afternoon if the dow instead of being down minus 160 or something like that is actually only down minus 40 to minus 50 you could start to see some kind of rally in the vix index instead of being up at the 2990 or even 30 level starts to pull back and gets back under 29 that'll be a good sign to say maybe thursday we get a nice follow through to the upside and the other thing that we're looking at right now is that i want to see the smh as the semiconductors uh, trading at 197.62 right now, down 234 after a really good gap up there yesterday, actually start to improve by day's end. I, I want to see these things. I want to see uh, 
I want to see also that within the context of the XLF, that's the financials, uh, the, they're holding very well, 31.96 right now. I'd love to see it back at about 32.15. And that's going to say there's rotation going on here that says that the extremely oversold areas are starting to find some support. And in this pullback, they are starting to uh, generate a little bit of buying interest. If everything is just horrible and we're looking at the Dow down 380 or more at um, – after 1.30, that's not a good sign at all, at least for the day. But you can't expect some kind of a decent give back after a fantastic two days, and we'll see what happens. So with that said, we're just about to wrap it up. Remember, this is the early uh, the early edition, and it'll be replayed again. So all, the, all I'm talking about in the futures, the Dow futures right now down to 293. The S&P futures are down 37. Let's see if there's some kind of a comeback later on. If it closes towards the low of the day, just down horribly, it says, yep, maybe this is just a one-off, just a relief rally. It's not a gusher, not like an oil gusher where the, the, the upside is just completely being born. No, nope. it says that there's some selling pressure going on. Have a wonderful day. I'll be back regular time tomorrow. Check out my opening call, my daily newsletter, and stay tuned. If it's the early edition you listen to, it's Tommy O'Brien. If it's later on, it'll be Steve. Have a great day.